The president told a nation that is tired of the war in Afghanistan that he has to send more troops and that he will begin bringing them home soon. As commander in chief, I have determined that it is in our vital national interest to send an additional 30,000 U.S. troops to Afghanistan. After 18 months, our troops will begin to come home. The goals deny al-Qaeda safe haven, contain the Taliban, and strengthen Afghanistan's security forces. The 30,000 new troops will deploy quickly in the first half of next year. This is a complex decision. It does not just depend on what number we put in there. It depends on what our interests are there, what our exit strategy is, how long are we going to be there, uh, convincing the American people that what we're doing is in our national interests. I think what the president has got to do is to use his typical uh, rhetorical skills. He's very good in these situations of explaining detail by detail exactly what he wants to do, explaining the pros and the cons, and getting people on both sides to, to understand understand that he's really thought through all the different options. The president has this needle to thread and every president in the posi his position has before him and that's how much detail do you give in order to assuage the fears of the American people without at the same time telegraphing a strategy that could be used against us by our opponents. So I think he's going to have a fine line to walk there. When you add 30,000 more troops you're investing even more in the war. And it's nice to talk of exit strategies, and it's smart, and it's useful. But the essence of the near-term decision is more American commitment, not less. Going against his party and much of the nation, Mr. Obama said he didn't take the decision lightly. If I did not think that the security of the United States and the safety of the American people were at stake in Afghanistan, I would gladly order every single one of our troops home tomorrow. Uh, the president made the right decision to have a properly resourced counterinsurgency strategy. I support it. I believe that the addition of 30,000 troops and the additional NATO troops are sufficient to get the job done, and I hope Republicans and Democrats support it. Definitely would have helped to have a lot more people on hand, especially, you know, infantry units. Uh, so I definitely feel there's a need for it if there's a need to stay in Afghanistan, I should say, then there's definitely a need for more troops. At first it was he was supposed to be pulling everybody out and now all of a sudden he's throwing everybody back into Afghanistan. And it's like, well, nobody can really make up their minds. President Obama is putting the war in Afghanistan on a fast track. He's sending U.S. forces in as quickly as possible and planning to pull them out sooner than expected. The president may not be able to pull out troops in short order with al-Qaeda just across the border in Pakistan. Setting that hard of a deadline is very difficult, especially given how the president has articulated the strategy, which is to defeat and dismantle al-Qaeda and its allies. I don't agree with an arbitrary date for withdrawal. Success is what dictates dates for withdrawal. If we don't have that success and we only set an arbitrary date, it emboldens our enemies and dispirits our friends. How do you say that this is a vital American interest and then on the other hand say we're going to get out start getting out on a date certain? Well, uh, the president has indicated, and this was reaffirmed today by Secretary Gates and uh, Admiral Mullen, that the date in 2011 is to begin a transition. It's based upon not any arbitrary choice, but it's based upon the advice of military commanders. The key factor is the training of Afghan troops. Our forces, our military uh, leaders are confident that they can field sufficient Afghan forces at a quality level that is uh, more than adequate to begin this transition. The pace of the transition will be decided by the commanders on the ground, but it's absolutely vital to have uh, such a goal because not only do we have to reassure the American public that we're not conducting an open-ended, infinite uh, campaign in Afghanistan, we have to begin to light a fire on the Afghanis to start the training and the governance improvements and the anti-corruption efforts they need. The president warned Afghanistan to clean up corruption and said there'd be no more blank checks. He pledged to work with Pakistan to root out terrorists there. One of the president's stated goals is to train the Afghan military and police forces well enough so the U.S. can begin a withdrawal. That's also been former Austin Police Chief Stan Nee's mission for the last three years. He's worked as a police mentor for a private security company in Afghanistan. He says it's a project worth completing. However, he also says that strategy needs to change and training needs to intensify. Instead of working five or six hours a day with Afghan police forces, he says mentors need to be with the trainees 24 hours a day, seven days a week.
the police have to build that relationship with the public so the public are the police and the police are the public. Other obstacles include the low literacy rate in Afghanistan and the Taliban, which has many more weapons than the police. What we continue to fight for is a better future for our children and grandchildren, and we believe that their lives will be better if other people's children and grandchildren can live in freedom and access opportunity. Until Afghanistan comes up with its own solution for its own problems, no one from outside can help. What benefit have we got from the foreign troops already in the country? Forget about 30,000. Even if one million more American troops come here, it will not solve anything until the Afghan security forces are ready. The Americans are doing this for their own geopolitical reasons, not for us. The Taliban have yet to come up with an official reaction to Obama's plans for Afghanistan, but a spokesman contacted by Al Jazeera said more foreign troops would simply give them a bigger target. America, we are passing through a time of great trial. And the message that we send in the midst of these storms must be clear, that our cause is just, our resolve unwavering. We will go forward with the confidence that right makes might, and with a commitment to forge an America that is safer, a world that is more secure, and a future that represents not the deepest of fears, but the highest of hopes. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America.